Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Messiah Lutheran Church on this beautiful morning, the fourth Sunday of Easter. Of course, it's Mother's Day as well. It's so, so wonderful to have you all joining us here at Messiah Lutheran Church. And my goodness, uh, it makes so much sense that uh, this Sunday, this fourth Sunday of Easter, at Mother's Day, we hear the story of uh, Tabitha. Uh, also known as Dorcas, uh, one of the, the first uh, 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 women, uh, earliest women in the church who was central to the, the church's ministry uh, to, to, to the hungry, to widows, to people in need. And we'll be hearing that story and letting it inspire us this Sunday morning. Messiah Lutheran Church is a congregation of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America that is rostered with reconciling work and continually seeks to become a more welcoming, affirming, and celebrating congregation to people of all ages, races, ethnicities, nationalities, sexual orientations, gender identities, gender expressions, relationship statuses, socioeconomic statuses, disabilities, and mental and physical conditions. We believe that these things make the church diverse, beautiful, and reflective of God, and we therefore affirm the beauty, value, and gifts of each and every single person. We acknowledge and honor the Haudenosaunee, Iroquois, and Algonquin nations upon whose ancestral homelands we gather for worship this day, as well as our indigenous siblings who continue to care for this land and call it their home. Please rise, friends, in body or spirit for our thanksgiving for baptism. <laughs> Alleluia, Christ is risen! Where's that enthusiasm, y'all? Hallelujah, Christ is risen! Christ is risen in me. You know I'm going to ask a third time. Hallelujah, Christ is risen! Christ is risen in me. Hallelujah. There we go. In the waters of baptism, we have passed over from death to life with Jesus Christ, and we are a new creation. For this saving mystery and for this water, let us bless God, who was, who is, and who is to come. We thank you, God, for your river of life flowing freely from your throne through the earth, through the city, through every living thing. You rescued Noah and his family from the flood. You opened wide the sea for the Israelites. Now in these waters you flood us with mercy, and our sin is drowned forever. You open the gate of righteousness, and we pass safely through. In Jesus Christ you calm and trouble the waters. You nourish us and enclose us in safety. You call us forth and send us out. In lush and barren places, you are with us. You have become our salvation. Now breathe upon this water and awaken your church once more. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst. Cleanse our hearts. Wipe away every tear. To you our beginning and our end, our shepherd and our lamb. Be honor, glory, praise, and thanksgiving now and forever. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace of the the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all let us pray to the Lord Lord have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer their worship and praise let us pray to the I love me that uh, foot tapping music there. It's real good. Let us pray. Oh God of peace, 
You brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep. By the blood of your eternal covenant, make us complete in every good, everything good that we may do your will. And work among us all that is well-pleasing in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Y'all may be seated, and our young people may come forward for our children's sermon. <clears throat> We're going to stay in front. This is the new Don't Light the Church on Fire plan. <laughs> Yay. Huh? Well, well, you all get to hold the microphone. You sit down. I didn't get to. Well, you'll get to this time, I promise. So, uh, so how's everybody doing? Good. 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 No, you're good for now. You're good for now. So, so here's the deal. This this Sunday's a bit. What what's the day? What's the day? Mother's day. Mother's day. Mother's day. Yeah. Did any, yeah. Did any of you have any uh, special message? Anything you want to say to your moms? Yeah. My doggy's birthday's today. Ah. I love you. Oh, that's so beautiful. What were you gonna say, Milo? I want my Twinkie. Twinkie? No, Slinky. Slinky. Those are cool again. Wow. That's great. Those were cool when I was a kid. So here's the thing that I think is really, really important to name. So in this, uh, in, oh, in one second, okay? In, in, in this Sunday's, uh, the first lesson, because the whole season of Easter, we're hearing from the book of Acts. And there, uh, does anyone remember from, from last week what the book of Acts is about? Probably not. The story of the book of Acts is all about what the first Christians were do doing right after Jesus' resurrection. And, w and we can know what the early church was like, the people that knew Jesus, what they did. And the people, oh, so cool. And, and what we know is that, especially in those, in those first years after Jesus came, women were central, central to the early Christian community. And they were leaders, and there's this woman, you hear the story of this woman named Tabitha, who, um, uh, who was central to making sure everyone was fed, and everyone had enough in the community, and, and, w and was central to ministering to everyone. And that's not all that different than how our food, y have you heard of our food pantries and stuff like that? Yeah. Here at Messiah, yeah? Why is that it's covered to make so you're not as distracted. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're trying man and so the central thing I want y'all to remember today is that especially in the early church women were central leaders uh, and, and, and we were, were, were recapturing that again today and I think that's really really important news so um, any, any comments on that I know some of you had some, some messages you wanted to say go ahead I gave my mom breakfast in bed. Wow. Uh, um, I love my mom every day. Oh, anything else? You want to? Yes. I was trying to give my mom some breakfast. Food. Ah, but and that. It's, it's the thought that counts. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's say a quick prayer. And we, uh, great, let's say a quick prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the leadership of, of Tabitha and women throughout the centuries in your church. We give you thanks for these young people and all they bring to, oh, you got it. <laughs> and all they bring to our spirit-filled community. We say all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I look Milo, please. Come on down. My, no, 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 Milo. Milo, no. No. Come on. Come on now, please. Milo, down. <sighs> Milo, come on. You got to come out. Go back down. There we go. No, 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 no. <sighs> Milo. <laughs> oh. 
Oh. Miley, you got to come out, man. Gotta come, you got to come out. Milo, please. Got to go see your mom. Yeah, your mom's coming up. Down. Thank you, friends. And we'll continue with our first reading. <laughs> you talk a lot in the microphone, man. <laughs> it's all good. We'll continue with the service. It's all good. <sighs> no. A reading from Max. Now in Joppa, there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which is Greek for Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At the time, she became ill and she died. When they washed her and laid her in a room upstairs, since L Lida was near Joppa, the disciples who heard that Peter was there sent two men to him with the request. Please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went to them, and when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all them outside, and then he knelt down and he prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. The word of the Lord. Hear the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple, in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me. But if you do not believe, because you do not believe, belong to my sheep, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of my Father's hand. The Father and I are one. This, my siblings in Christ, is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Y'all may be seated.
as I was saying to uh, a few of you uh, before the service, there's, there's two Sundays of the year that are the most complicated for any pastor to preach on. Uh, one is the All Saints Day, uh, and one is Mother's Day. Because Mother's Day has, uh, I know in my own life, right, has a right of different, you know, smorgasbord, I guess you could say, of different types of emotions, right? I, I, I miss my own mom this day. I'm also, I'm also thankful for, uh, you know, my stepmom, and, 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 and it's a, it can be a complicated uh, day for a lot of folks. Also, too, with, the, with seeing how many of you, uh, how many, um, especially women in our congregation, were reacting to the news around Roe v. Wade this past week. I will be briefly uh, uh, speaking to that in my sermon, although that's not the entire, um, entire summary of it, just as a kind of like a little bit of a content warning if people feel comfortable. A lot of a lot of the, 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 the what we are a lot of we are experiencing and feeling and thinking over the last week has, a, has is, is a much broader, a much deeper um, thing than just thinking about Roe v. Wade. And I think some of what the news of this past week shows um, and speaks to is something far deeper and, 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 and a symptom of a, a wider problem, no matter what we think about these issues. I'm going to start by referring to something 2,000 years ago. So, uh, Rich, you can throw that picture up on the screen. And folks, feel free to pull it out on your on your pull up Facebook on your phones if you want to see this picture. But if you went over to Ephesus in Turkey uh, today, and you went to the, the, uh, the uh, I forget, it's a cave, right? This ancient cave where the early, Christ early Christians would have worshipped. You would see this fresco in Ephesus called, called the, I think it's like the, 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 the it's the cave of St. Paul. But it's not just St. Paul on the, painted on the wall in like an ancient uh, Roman kind of painting. There's next to him. So right, Paul's there kind of with like the little two fingers like a, like a apostle you know, preacher person, right? But right next to him is a woman. Thecla, actually. You probably don't know about Thecla because her story did not make it a few centuries later into the New Testament, but we still have that book. It was widely disseminated. The uh, book uh, called The Acts of Paul and Thecla. And in this, and in this, and in this book, we, there's this, it's a story of St. Paul in his first preaching uh, mission um, go, uh, it goes out and, uh, and, and, and this young woman, Thecla, she's about to be, uh, she's betrothed, she's about to be married, she's not particularly excited about it, and she hears uh, St. Paul preaching actually about abstinence, and she starts to think, geez, the church is a way that I can find freedom where I can retain ownership of my own body, control of my own womb where I can have some sort of independence. And so shortly thereafter, she decides she does not want to be married, that she wants to follow Paul and follow the early Christian movement. And for that, she's hauled before a governor, is stripped naked and sentenced to be burned at the stake so that all the women who have been taught by this man may be afraid. A rain falls, it puts the fire out, so she's saved. She goes with St. Paul. Then another man attempts to take her from Paul by force. She fights back, 
And because she hits this man, she's hauled before another governor, and that governor sends her to death by eat, like being eaten by wild beasts. And in the uh, arena, in this sort of, sort of like coliseum sort of thing, you saw a gladiator, right? Kind of like that. Uh, right as the beasts are let out, she jumps into a vat of sea lions, actually, <laughs> to baptize herself. And she is saved once again by God. Pull the fresco up again, Rich. But if you, so, and so Thecla was a well-known character. A well-known, uh, important uh, woman, apostle, teacher, uh, servant of God in the early church. And if you look at that fresco, her two fingers, like denoting that she was a leader in the church, are burned off. They haven't just decayed like at the rest of the fresco. They were literally on purpose burned off, trying to silence her, trying to say, no, you don't have control. And I think one thing we ought to think of, and we can have very, very, very different opinions and, 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 and views on um, issues related to the news of the past week, issues of abortion, but I think one thing we ought to deeply ground ourselves in is the fact that, number one, especially in the earliest Christian movements, the, a big part of the earliest church was giving was was women taking the lead in a brand new way that was not possible in the wider Greco-Roman society, right? Number one, and number two, that the history of much of the church thereafter has been to push those folks down. We have to, well, no matter what we think about these issues, we have to ground that in that context. That the earliest Christian church was probably one of the biggest reasons it spread so far and why was that women were lifted up in so many ways, right? Every single, all four of the Gospels. Who sees Jesus resurrected first? The dudes are hiding and are afraid. The women at the tomb. Who sings that song of liberation, of casting the mighty down from their thrones? Mary. We know that at least in mo many of the early Christian communities, probably one of the most radical anti-imperial aspects of the early Christian movement was women rising up and taking equal leadership with men. And my goodness, don't we know throughout much of the rest of Christian history, a central aspect of Christian history, a central sin of the church has been pushing women down. It's important context to remember. And that continues throughout so much of history and so much of, 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 of the history of, 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 of women and, and, and the church so much of it is grounded in this idea of, of, of control of, of bodies in a way. Y'all know the story of Joan of Arc, roughly, right? Right? So that's 1400, 1300 years later. Right? And she goes and she's there to, to, to liberate France from the, from the Britons. She dresses, the reason she's actually burned at the stake, it's, you know, we're taught that she's burned at the stake because she's a heretic. It's a little more specific. She was dressing like a man. Why was she dressing like a man? To protect herself from sexual violence in the military. Right? A couple hundred years later, when you really look at the history of a lot of like the, like the, the witch trials, right? And stuff like that. A lot of these people that we can think of as witches, they were, they were, they were women who decided not to be married. Right? Who made that choice. They were like early feminists. And just like they tried to do the Thecla 2,000 years ago and failed, 
burned at the stake. And so, no matter what we might think about the issues of our own day, we, as Christians, we need to know and confess that history to be able to move forward from it. It's so, so important. And there is good news. It takes a bit to uncover, though. No matter what we might think about uh, the issue of, of, about abortion and Roe v. Wade, uh, it's, also, it's important to know the, the recent history as well, just to know the context that this came upon, up, up on us in. So for, do, do we know, did you know, and a lot of people are surprised by this, to this day there's, not, there's nothing in the Constitution that says women and men are equal in the United States. Did, who knew that? There's nothing. They tried to, they tried to be. From 1940 to 1980, it was in the political platforms of both political parties to put forward something called the Equal Rights Amendment. Simply stating that, 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 that back then, using the terms of that day, that both sexes had equal rights in the United States of America. Supported by both parties. Both, you know, presidential candidates of both parties even all the way up to the, the 1970s, supported by, uh, by, by, by Jimmy Carter and uh, who else was running, running Gerald Ford, and uh, that, that era, the era, era of um, politicians. But what happened right around then? Right around then. Something that doesn't relate to the issues of women at all, actually. But uh, it ended up being that way. So across the South, right around that time in the early 70s, there are all these Christian schools popping up for the first time. Any idea why in the early 70s there might be all these Christian schools popping up in the South? Private Christian schools. Segregation. Right. Right, so nine, in the 1950s, Brown versus Board of Education, uh, it, right, you have to desegregate the schools throughout the South. You know, the, 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 the National Guard sent in to desegregate schools. We've seen these same things. I, I'm assuming everyone is against segregation <laughs> watching this or, 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 or be here today. And, um, but, well, what are some other options? Well, churches throughout the South set up these private Christian schools that could remain segregated. To give you an idea, uh, in 1969, uh, and this is specifically the case that leads to where we are today, in 1969, the number of white students in the Holmes County, Mississippi school district dropped from 771 to 28. And the following year, there was zero. Zero in the public schools. All the white kids got sent to these private Christian academies. And they were schools. So they're off the tax rolls. Right? They don't, there's no, just like church, right? There's no, there's no, um, the, 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 the tax exempt status. And up until this time, for Catholics, abortion was, the, the Catholics have been for a couple centuries at least, anti, uh, against abortion, to be fair. But the rest, like sort of evangelical world, let's hear what the evangelical world had to say about this issue in the 60s and 70s. In 1968, a symposium set up by the Christian Medical Society and Christianity Today, which is sort of the major evangelical magazine, um, said um, they, re they refused to characterize abortion as sinful, citing individual health, family welfare, and social responsibility as justifications for ending a pregnancy. In 1971, the Southern Baptist Convention in St. Louis passes a resolution saying Southern Baptists are to work for legislation that will allow the possibility of abortion under such conditions as rape, incest, 
clearly ev clear evidence of severe fetal deformity and carefully ascertained evidence of the likelihood of damage to the emotional, mental, and physical health of the mother. I could keep listing those sort of opinions. All the way through the 60s into the early 70s, after, a few years after Roe v. Wade, the vast majority of the evangelical movement in the United States didn't really have that much of an opinion, or I guess you could say pro-choice, at least to some extent. And then what happened? Well, those, those early Christian academies the IRS started looking into them, actually under Nixon. Right? So this is this is not the political thing, the political party thing. This is under Nixon, right? Is it under, under both political parties? These different things happen. And under Nixon, um, the IRS starts looking into um, whether or not these schools are are are, are, are on purpose segregating, uh, are segregating by race. And it turns out they are. They literally there's a little place, famous place, Bob Jones University. Maybe some of you have heard of it. Um, that literally tells the IRS, yes, we are in favor, we are segregating our, 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 our student population. And the IRS says, well, that's fine, but you, use, you lose your tax-exempt status. And it's that particular, and, and, and it's that particular decision, that particular decision, that segregation can no longer be allowed in schools that leads, and this is well documented, feel free to Google it, uh, that leads uh, folks like Jerry, uh, Paul, Jerry Falwell and, and Paul Lyrick to s start up that cult, whole moral majority thing, and they try to find another issue to gain political power in the United States. And they, five years after Roe v. Wade, that's when they decide, oh, abortion is something we can use and, and twist and change and use in a way to gain power. And so much of it, and, and right ever since that time, this is a, this is a political, this is a spiritual issue. It's why I'm preaching on it. It's a spiritual issue because the church has been so divided, broken apart, ever since, ever since 1978, pretty much. My entire life, I grew up in a context when I was so happy to tell people that I was a Christian in school. Because I went to my church and I heard about human rights and feeding the hungry and, and caring for everyone. And I remember even in high school, my friends thinking, isn't, isn't Christianity about hating gay people and not letting women have equal rights? And who are, has anyone, my millennial friends, anyone have that experience? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My entire life, the demographic community has been about for the demographic. I've been, I was, I've been, me and Rachel were watching like some various, various TikToks that came out on the news after this week and, 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 and right, the, 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 there's this, there's a very, the whole church is lumped in together because it's seen as like the thing pushing, um, you know, pushing these anti-abortion uh, anti laws. And so that's the context we find. A movement that started with that. A movement that started with the story of Tabitha in the book of Acts, who was clearly. You okay? Oh, I need a mic? Oh, man. Killer. A movement that started with Tabitha. Where, where she was clearly a prominent woman in this community, where she was someone who was beloved by everybody, who was central to ministering to those in need, who was a leader. That was a central part of how this church started. And now we find ourselves 2,000 years later, the thing we're known for in the United States is putting women
So no matter how we personally feel about these issues, we need to hold that context in regard. And, my goodness, we need to ground ourselves in the good news as well about what Jesus actually preached, about what Paul actually preached, how Paul said there was ne you know, neither male nor female in Christ, how everyone was equal, and there was neither slave nor free, there was neither Greek nor Jew, and how everyone was lifted up equally around a table where all were welcome. That was the central thing that made Christianity start, that started this movement against those imperial dictates that, that divided everyone against one another. All of this grounded in, these, these, in, in a time when women were put down even more than today. The early church lifted up leaders. And, and women, it, women were able to find a place where they could be completely free and, and, have, and have control and, 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 and have free, freedom. And, and women have found that throughout, the, throughout history, throughout the church, despite how the church has been in many ways. Hear the good news. That is what's at the heart of our faith. Not this division and control and misogyny. What is at the heart of our faith is liberation in Christ. A, a message that no matter who you are, you can come to this table and be fed and be sent back out to feed others in turn. That is the good news. That is what we are called to proclaim. You are followers on the way of, of Christ, the way of a God who welcomes all around a common table together, equitably, equally, without exception. And that ought to ground us in the days and weeks and months and years ahead. Amen. Please rise, rise, friends, body or spirit, as we continue with our hymn of the day.
Russell McDonald. Is he here? Yeah, you are, man. I, couldn't find, I was like, where's Russell? I know he's going to talk in a minute. Russell is going to talk with us about our fellowship ministry team and all the various fellowship ministries at Messiah as part of our time and talent stewardship campaign. There you go, Thank my you. friend. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Russell. So all of you know, my name is Russell. Uh, many of you know I'm an alcoholic in recovery. And uh, so talking about fellowship this morning is extremely important for me. It's uh, one of, if not the most important parts of recovery for me. So I am here to talk about fellowship ministry. Everybody should have one of these somewhere in your thingamajigger, whatever it's called. Um, thingamajigger. Yes, that thingamajigger. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, but first, I'd like to say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there, uh, especially Penny for helping me get ready for this talk. Um, you know, as many times as I speak in front of people, whether it's in a recovery meeting or at church, um, I always think about it for a couple of days and then I'm just like, eh, out the window because I never know what exactly I'm going to say when I get here. Um, so thankfully, all of this stuff is right here in front of me. Um, so our fellowship ministry, it's, you know, an opportunity for everybody to come together, whether young, old, male, female, everybody who's welcome at the table, uh, an opportunity to come and help out with the community and the church. Um, and in our fellowship ministry, we have, I think, eight different committees, which our website needs to be updated because there's only four. Um, and they all start out uh, are pretty basic. You know, we have our welcoming committee, which welcomes all our new members. So even right from the beginning, um, you know, we have a committee, we have fellowship that it, it, it says it, it. We welcome people. Um, from there, we talk about some of the stuff that, how do I follow Pastor Sermon? Um, you know, we have our women of the ELCA, um, which, you know, the women come together and they do their own fellowship together. And on the other side of that fence, we have the Lutheran Men in Mission, um, which brings all our men together to do just about the same thing. Um, we also have another two sides of the coin. We have our, um, our Young Adults Committee. Um, ages 18 to 35, uh, for people to come together and, and again, just have that fellowship and do things for the community. Um, the other side of that coin is our over 55 gang. Um, pretty self-explanatory there. Um, what else do we have here? Um, so then some of the other committees that we have, we have our kitchen committee that um, helps make everybody coffee and do all of the feeding and food stuff here at the church. Um, and then we also have our Care and Concern Committee, um, which is a program where we reach out to people in the community who may not be able to make it to church, who may not have the ability to, to do some of these things. And um, as a member of that committee during the pandemic, it was amazing to see some of the work that was done there, whether it was bringing uh, uh, the kits together that we brought to people at home um, whether it was just reaching out and saying hello to somebody, whoever was on our list, um, to reach out, you know, bringing food to people in the holidays. Um, a, great, a great fellowship committee uh, to be involved in. I myself am the Arts and Cultures Chair uh, for, that, for the Arts and Chairs. Bleh. Let's try again and learn how to speak. Um, arts and Cultures Chair Committee. And uh, we do all sorts of wonderful stuff with arts and cultures, whether it's uh, arts and crafts class, we have the, the women who meet over at Trinity, led by another wonderful mother, our friend Barbara back there. Um, doing arts and crafts on Mondays over at Trinity, uh, myself leading Zentangle and meditation on Mondays. Um, so there's all sorts of opportunities to be involved in fellowship here at the church and in the community, lots of opportunities uh, over at the community center as well. Um, if you're interested in joining a committee, there are little thingies out there. Thingies and whatchamacallits, that's, that's my, that's, yeah, thingamajiggers. Uh, sign up sheets out there on the bulletin board next to the TV. Um, if you're interested in signing up, uh, you can also do it online, um, or you can just reach out to somebody here. Um, you know, just great opportunities to be involved um, and not just do nothing. Be a part, be a part of the community. So I think that was my two to five minutes. I think I did good. Um, I hope everybody gets a chance. Thank you, thank you. Um, I hope to see some of you guys at some of these events, so.
Thank you again. Happy Mother's Day. Can you bring that back to the elbow? Just so you don't need it? Yep. I don't think I do. Thanks, everybody. Have a great Mother's Day. Thank you so much, Russell. Um, let me say, friends, that my goodness, when I was uh, yesterday at uh, Rachel's bridal shower that so many of you are at, and there, you know, people were just hanging out. I actually had a blast. I've heard those things are horrible. It was great fun. Uh, and, uh, and we were just playing games and being silly together, and um, so much of the issues of our world, I think a big part of it, right, can just be worked out through being together like that and knitting the fabric of community back together after so long apart. And, and that's what our fellowship ministry team is, is all about. A couple just little things that are particular uh, important fellowship matters coming up. So this Tuesday... At 7 p.m. on Zoom, we're going to have a, um, a speaker who is, a, is a, um, a therapist and a school social worker in the Schenectady City School District talking about uh, kids' mental health amidst COVID and how churches can support young people. Um, so we, I really hope as many people from our congregation can take part in that as possible because we all got to work together to support our young people, especially right now. Um, and then uh, June 15th, I'm so stoked, we're going to have a big concert and ice cream social at the Trinity Community Center uh, featuring, what's the name, the Midnight Anthem, which are these three uh, cousins. It's kind of like a folksy, bluegrassy sort of thing. Um, so please invite all your friends to that as well. Those are just a couple fellowship things coming up. One other fellowship thing that's coming up is there is like about 10 pizzas worth of pizza left over from the bridal shower. And so please go upstairs after church and grab as much pizza as you can. And with that said, we'll continue with our, our, our prayer for uh, Mother's Day. We pray for mothers everywhere, for mothers of young children that they may nurture and raise their children to be good and faithful people in the world, for mothers of older children that they may have the wisdom to know when to help their children hang on to their roots and when to spread their wings, for mothers of grown children that they may feel satisfaction in a job well done, on this day, we remember mothers of children in war-torn countries, mothers of children where disaster or famine has struck, and mothers who fear for their children's safety that they may find food for their children, justice for their families, and peace for their souls. We also lift up those for whom this day is painful, mothers whose children are missing, mothers whose children have died, mothers who have entrusted others to raise their ch child, mothers who have lost children to miscarriage, mothers who have lost custody of their children, mothers whose children have disappointed them. We pray for those who wish to have children but have them, that they may be filled by God. We pray, too, for all motherless children, children whose mothers have abused or abandoned them, and for all those whose mothers have recently died. For all the good experiences of motherhood, we thank and praise you, O oh God. And we lift up to you for healing all those painful experiences of motherhood as well. Amen. Let us now our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, is and seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, Christ the only Son of God, eternally begotten good. of the Father, God, God from God, God light from, from light, light, true God, God from true God, God, begotten not made, of one being of the Father, through him they will be made. For us and for, for our salvation, salvation, he came down, down from heaven, heaven. he was incarnate of the Holy, of the Holy Spirit, Spirit and, the and the Virgin Mary. Mary. He and became truly human. human. For our, For our sake, sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. Pilate. He, he suffered, suffered the death and was buried. buried. On he, the third the day, day, he rose again. In accordance with the, with the scriptures, he ascended, he ascended into, into heaven and is seated, seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his, and his kingdom, kingdom will have, will have no, no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. Be thou as one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, 
we look, we look for the, the resurrection, resurrection of, the of the dead and the, and the life, life of, of the world, world to come. come. Amen. With the whole church, all people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all in God's creation. What prayers do we have this day? Please wait for the mic. Pray for the Furbeck family who has many, many health issues among their family members. We pray for Penny's uh, family who have many, many health issues among many of their members of the family, that they may be heal your, heal you, know your healing and peace, O oh God. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Celebrate my mom, Lori's 99th birthday. She's going to outlive all of us, man. We lift up prayers of thanksgiving for Lori on her 99th birthday and for her, her witness throughout her life uh, in this spirit-filled community. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Hi, I would like to ask for continued prayers for healing for my friend Nick. We lift the prayers of healing for Nick. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Um, for my nephew Angelo, who just graduated from Michigan State University yesterday. We lift up th uh, prayers of thanksgiving for. Angelo, who graduated from Michigan State University yesterday. And for all our graduates who are celebrating, all those going to proms and all that awesome end of the school year stuff. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. We also lift up uh, prayers of healing for, for Kim. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. We lift up, with Carly, we lift up prayers and blessings to all the moms she knows. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. With Amy, we lift up prayers for Emily and Krista's continued success at becoming moms. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. As part of the World Council of Church's ecumenical prayer cycle, we lift up prayers to the countries of India, Pakistan, and Sri Lanka this day. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. And we lift our prayers to you, O oh God, trusting in your abundant grace. Amen. World. We are reminded that we are called to, bring, to go and bring the witness of God's love to the world. We will join us in our sung response, and we consider the words of the prophet Micah. What does the Lord require of you? with you always. Let us share a sign of God's peace with one another. 
Peace be with you. What do you want to do? Peace, 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 peace. Friends, we know that some of you are joining us here at Messiah for the first time. If you're worshiping with us virtually and would like to learn more about our ministries and activities, please contact us by email or by phone. If you'd like to make an online gift using Tithely or via mail to Messiah in support of our ministries, this is a wonderful time to do so. If you've brought your offering, please feel free to place it in the plate when you depart. For those participating virtually, we invite you to help us spread the good news by sharing the live stream and liking our Facebook page. For all you do in support of our mission to nourish our neighborhood, in body, mind, and soul, we say thank you. Spirit. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to the new life, Christ gave us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be he with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you almighty and merciful god for the glorious resurrection of our savior jesus christ the true paschal lamb who gave himself to take away our sin who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life and so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. The day that in joy and delights we join with all the angels of heaven and all the creatures on earth to sing our praise and thanksgiving to you, all holy and mighty and glorious God, for Christ is risen. 
Christ is risen indeed. This is the day you gave light to the earth. This is the day you saved the Israelites through the sea. And with your pillar of fire led them to freedom. Now every night is as bright as day. And that light is Christ. Thanks be to God. This is the day you broke the chains of death. This is the day that Mary, Mary ain't heaven to earth. You washed away sin, rescued us from evil, and brought us your peace. The Lamb who was slain hath begun to reign, for Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. On the night before he died, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all the drinks, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us therefore proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. On this day, send us the power of your Holy Spirit. Revive us with the body and blood of our risen Savior. Illumine our lives with your presence. Shine your morning star over the whole human race. For that light is Christ. Thanks be to God. All holy and mighty and glorious God, radiant Father, victorious Son, shining Spirit, we bless your salvation. We sing of your mercy. And we praise your victory through all time and space. For Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Amen. 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 And gathered together by the Holy Spirit, let us pray together the way Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, come to the banquet, for all is now ready, and all are welcome. We are very thankful for our impromptu communion giver outers. <laughs> I love y'all so much. Uh, honey, the body of Christ is given for you. Here's the body of Christ given for you. Darth Maul? That's what the body of Christ is given for you. Here's a prayer. Give me a prayer.
Please rise, friends, in body or spirit. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Then voices raised. And what God has done, let everyone who seek the Lord rejoice and bear the name of Christ. Then with your promises and lead your people forth in joy with shouts of thanksgiving. Hallelujah, We give you thanks, generous God, for this bread and cup. We have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from your table as witnesses to the resurrection that through our lives all may know Jesus' name. Amen. And God, the author of life, Christ the living cornerstone, the life-giving spirit of adoption bless you now and forever. Amen. Tell what God has done. Thanks be to God.